you realize you can extend your life just by fixing your sleep. If you're getting less than five hours of sleep, your risk for dying goes up by like 12%. So the sleep is a very powerful predictor of all-cause mortality. And I'm not just talking about the amount of sleep, I'm talking about the quality of sleep. So let's talk about how to increase the quality of your sleep. There's three main problems. Either you can't get to sleep, you can't stay asleep, or you wake up too early, okay? Now, if you get up at two, that's because your cortisol is too high. I have a separate video for that, but this video in general should help you. Everything is controlled by this extremely tiny little structure in your brain, okay? It's called the supracosmotic nucleus. So that's something to say at a party to sound intelligent, but the supracosmotic nucleus is about one fourth the size of one millimeter squared. But the size of this little nerve bundle is extremely small. It's like a, a fourth of one millimeter, okay? It's just like really, really tiny. You got two of them and they're like a pair and they control the clock in the body, okay? The, they control the circadian rhythms of the body. And it's their main hormone that helps with this is called melatonin, okay? So melatonin triggers this whole process. And the most powerful controlling factor over this, this structure right here is light, okay? And dark cycles. And so the real problem with our sleep is that we live in an abundance of artificial light, okay? So first of all, our light is artificial, fluorescent lights, um, and also we have too much light. I mean, light is 24 hours. Like if you live in the city or in your house, you can keep the lights on. And we pretty much have the lights on all day as we're by our computers, right? We go places, there's the lights on in these rooms. And then of course, uh, you might be watching TV with the lights on and all that light inhibits this uh, melatonin, okay? So melatonin is triggered by darkness. So that's one thing you need to know, but there's another type of melatonin that is outside the little gland that makes melatonin, which is called the pineal. And so there's another source of melatonin that's made by all your cells, okay? That's outside the pineal gland. And that melatonin is triggered by <laughs> light, but not any light, very specifically infrared light, okay? It's a certain wavelength of light. And so you have this whole spectrum of light starting over here with like ultraviolet light and it goes to the visible spectrum of light. And then we have infrared on the other side. And it just so happens that the sun has over 50% infrared. So it's really important to expose yourself to sun to get more infrared to build up your melatonin. And melatonin has a lot of other functions that go beyond just sleeping. Melatonin is the most powerful antioxidant. So it helps with a lot of other things. It gives you energy and it helps protect you against diseases and even cancer, but also it helps you sleep. So to improve your sleep, let's just take a look at what you need to do. Number one, if you wanna reset your circadian waves, okay? It's very important to expose your eyes and your body to light in the morning when you wake up. This will greatly start to give communication to that little nuclei to tell it to work correctly, okay? So the best thing to do is to get out in the morning when the sun's coming up and expose your eyes and body to that light. Of course, I'm not saying to stare right into the sun, but just be out there for at least 30 minutes. That's the best thing you can do. If that's not an option, you can get a bright light. Okay, it's called bright light therapy and expose your eyes and your, your body to this bright light for about 30 minutes in the morning. Okay, so you might wanna do that in the winter time, but even if it's a cloudy day, you're still going to get um, some good rays. And even in the woods, if you're standing in the woods, you're still getting a significant amount of infrared because infrared penetrates through the, the canopy of the, the leaves and the uh, branches and it comes right down. 
And it also penetrates through our bodies, through our clothes, about a couple inches. So it can go right into our body. I'm talking specifically about infrared. That's why people that get more sun exposure actually sleep better. All we're trying to do is align our bodies to nature, okay? You should wake up to sun and go to bed when it gets dark, right? That's all we're trying to do. Now, in the PM, okay, when the sun's going down, ideally, to expose yourself to this sunset, okay, that would be very, very therapeutic if you could do that. Or you can actually uh, expose yourself to a red light, right? Red light therapy, which is infrared, but not necessarily right before you go to bed, like at least two hours before you go to bed or sometime in the day, because it can generate a lot of melatonin that can actually give you energy, okay? So that might not be the best thing right before bed. Or, okay, you can just expose yourself to sun during the day. Because like I said before, over 50% of the sun's rays are infrared. And so if you're getting a good amount of sun, you'll have a lot of melatonin, which is gonna help you sleep because that's gonna recharge melatonin. And the other thing is, <laughs> Towards the evening, okay, let's say seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, don't be sitting in a room with your lights on. Start turning the lights off if you're watching TV, kind of just dim the lights in your room or just have candles, okay? Or if you have a fireplace, have that as your light. That'll give you a lot of infrared candlelight and a campfire and your fireplace all give off infrared. It's that nice uh, yellow orange flame and uh, you can feel infrared by by heat now the second most powerful stimulus for that uh, little nucleus that helps your circadian rhythms would be exercise consistent regular exercise creates significant improvements in your sleep cycles okay so that's number three and number four keep your room cooler because if you're sleeping in a hotter environment you will not be able to sleep as well. So I keep my temperature about 68. Um, number five, magnesium is a really good remedy. There's a lot of remedies, but magnesium is really good to take before you go to bed. If you want recommendations of a good one, I'll put a link down below. But magnesium can help relax the entire body, relax the muscles, and it can actually allow you to drift off into a, a really good sleep. There's other things like vitamin D, zinc, and there's also stress reducing herbs like ashwagandha. There's a lot of things, but these five things are the most important things to improve your sleep and extend your life. Now, if you haven't seen my video on melatonin, that would be a very interesting one to watch. I put it up right here, check it out. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.